everyone, this is Shane Walton here and I'm bringing you another video about a latest guitar. Before we start off, for the love of God, like, comment and subscribe, please! Anyways, on to the video. Today I'm bringing you uh, my review of the, my latest guitar, which is uh, Maybury, a Fishhook T-style guitar out of England. Maybe Maybury guitars are out of England, run by a guy named Jason, who uh, is a boutique uh, luthier. Who uh, I think I believe he started making guitars as a, a challenge from his son. His son wanted him to make a guitar, so he did, and he liked it so much he decided to keep on making them, which I think is really cool. Before we go any further in this uh, re this review, I want you to remember that I'm not a professional musician anyway, nor am I a professional uh, internet rev YouTube reviewer. I'm just a dude who likes guitars and speaking to other dudes who I think also likes guitars. Anyways, let's get on to the guitar here. So this is uh, the Mayber Mayberry Fishhook guitar uh, in this kind of this forest green type color. Okay, the color company here is called Mayberry, out of England, I believe Surrey, England. And uh, I first this guitar has a little bit of a story with me. I first caught my eye on Instagram, I think about two years ago. It was in 2022 is when I first came on their Instagram page, and I remember just really liking it a lot you know it really reminded me a lot of my uh my of course my uh uh sahana here as you see together <laughs> like the brothers from another mother type type of look to them right okay and uh you know, i've always been a sucker for green guitars there's another kind of different color shade of green one behind me in my sector there and i really 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 wanted it just uh, just at the time wasn't really feasible for me and this guitar went on to uh, to Shane and in, in the Blues, who reviewed it and maybe had it for about a year or so. And then it got on. I managed to get on to me. Now, this guitar wasn't a gift for me. I'm not paid for this video in any way. This I paid for this guitar with my daughter's college fund, as you do. Talking about this guitar, there are two words that really popped in my head. One is premium. The other one is traditional. Well, premium. I mean, when you hold this guitar, you know this is a boutique guitar. You could just tell that it was made with a lot of love and the guy took extra care, spent hours on this getting ready. One thing that really strikes for me is actually the headstock here. Of course, the design's pretty good, but over that, this, this headstock is kind of three-dimensional. I mean, when you turn it to its side, it's kind of rounded out, much like a fish hook would be. You know, it's kind of rounded out. It's not like a, usually you get a headstock, you know, it's a, the two-dimensional looks good. But then it's like a 90 degree cut and it looks kind of cardboardy. A good example would be my Schecter. You know, I do love this guitar. When you look straight on it, it looks fine, but turn to the side, it's kind of like a straight 90 degree angle cut. It's not really a, you know, it kind of looks look, kind of like a cookie cutter type of thing. Well, this one, you know, you straight on, it's kind of curved to the side. It looks so much better. So much more, you know, premium, upper class type of look to it. Don't get me wrong, for metal, I love my Schecter, but just the general aesthetic of this is just so far advanced. Going down on this, you go here, you see these inlays. Now these inlays seem to have like a metal outline inside what has like an orange resin. And this is not just on the uh, front part, on the side dots. Oh, this, sorry, this way. The side dots, the same thing. If we can get in there. It's the same, a metal and orange resin, you know. It's nice to have like a front inlay that's kind of special. But the side dot inlays are just not dots, same metal with orange resin in, which I think is just really cool and premium. Then going down to the body here, of course you've got uh, this great, the popular body with this green bursting out on it. It's, of course got a little bit of a speckle on here, you don't really feel it though. But what I think really neat about this is it's got this binding on here. This brownish kind of tiger type binding on it which really goes really well. And then on the back, we have a kind of dark green paint. Now, maybe it doesn't do really relic guitars, but this is a brand new and it looks brand new, but at the same time, it looks kind of has an old worn in feeling. Kind of like one day a man was walking through the forest and there's this forest sprite that left him this guitar from 300 years ago. And it's got all this kind of really earthy type of vibe to it, this whole thing. The knobs are, because we have a uh, brass saddles and this, these knobs are also kind of like this uh, brass type of worn brown to it. And the black paint is as well with the name on it. It gives it all this, it, 
And it gives this new guitar a look that it's like kind of old and worn in, which I really love. It's really a premium type of work. You could tell just by holding it that this is premium guitar. Oh, I forgot to mention that the neck is a one piece neck. It's got this kind of a flamey type uh, maple to it. It's really kind of pops out. It's hard to see on camera maybe, but when you're playing it, it really pops up to the hand. Okay, the neck is a C-shaped, you know, and it's a, I think a pretty standard C shape. I don't think it's a, uh, Shane thought, Shane in the blues thought it was a bit chunky. I feel it's kind of normal C to me. Uh, it's got your standard telly on a block there, which I think works fine. And the threads are all, you know, it's a, you know, it's a boutique guitar, so the threads, nothing's popping out. Kind of a little bit bigger size too, maybe medium jumbo. And we, of course, they've got a bone nut up there as well. Also, this is kind of a bit of a bonus because uh, Shane from In The Blues owned this before. So uh, when he sent it to me, I am not sign it. <laughs> maybe I'm fanboying out there a little bit, but hey, why not? You know, I kind of wanted, you know, I'm a fan. What can I say? Got to sign just the bonus. I'll throw a picture of another one of their guitars on the screen right now that kind of shows their relict but not relict type of look at to it, right? So this is a guitar, it's brand new. You know, uh, a brand new paint shop, but it's still got kind of that worn in feeling to it. Like it's not rocked, but it still seems kind of like it's something that's like lying around in the farm barn for like two, two decades until somebody took it out and started playing it again. So it's got that worn in, but not relic feeling. I'm not a fan of relics, but I am kind of enjoy the way this kind of looks old without actually being old and not really relict. You know, nobody would say that you, you're a poser with this kind of guitar, but still it gives that kind of a good rustic feel to it. The next thing I have to say about this guitar really pops out, it was sound wise, it's kind of, it's traditional. It sounds like a traditional telly, you know, if you, like myself, you know, I've, I'm a metal guy, I usually play metal pointy guitars like this one over here or my, my this one here or my V. And it looks like metal, you know, EMG pickups, you know, active pickups type of guy. However, uh, I've been wanting to get like a traditional telly because, you know, my my father, he used to, you know, play professionally back in the late 60s in northern Alberta, Canada. You know, he, when I, growing up, I remember we always had two tellies. One was, a, you know, a three, a, a three color sunburst. And another one was this... Uh, uh, butterscotch telly with a moose on it here. Remember, it had the moose in the corner here. And you know, it seemed so cool at the time. You know, like when I was young, the best guitarist around where I was in Northern Canada was people thought it was my father, and I thought too. You know, and his telly seemed really cool. So even though I myself grew up listening to metal and not to the Buck Owens like my father did, I still always had a kind of a pining to have that kind of a, a telly. And personally, like, uh, for my telly, I was looking for the uh, uh, maybe Led Zeppelin one type of sound here. And here, I think when you play this bridge pickup, it's got a lot of bite to it. You know, you can, you can do heavy heavy rock and stuff like that. You've seen like maybe the sound uh, clips at the beginning, or maybe I'll show you a sound clip now. And the neck, of course, has a nice good country tone to it, which I enjoy a lot. And it handles overdrive quite well too. And so it's, it's got the good telly bite, the telly twang you want, you know. And personally, I kind of like metal music that's got a bit of a bite to it in the guitar, you know, not just your monotone type of active pick of stuff all the time. So, so my plan with this is, uh, you know, I want to learn the Led Zeppelin one album with this one here, you know. This is my guitar I'm going to use to try to get all my Jimmy Page, early Jimmy Page vibes on there and uh, try to work and try to work on that. So wish me luck with that. Now, um, things, let's go on to things I might not like about this guitar. There's not much. One thing was mentioned by Shane is that the fish hook design, right there, okay, uh, it's cool, it's unique, gives a style. It does, if, you, if you're really, you know, noodling up top here, you're gonna bump your pinky uh, knuckle from time to time on the, on this here. You know, it doesn't, doesn't really hurt, it doesn't really get in the way, but it's just something you do notice, you know, and do I want to bump my pinky? Well, maybe not. Am I going to lose sleep over it? Maybe not either. Like for example, if you're playing like the, uh, say, Stairway to Heaven, uh, end of the solo, when it goes from the 13th to the 20th fret, ding, 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 
you're you're definitely going to lightly bump your pinky and maybe your ring finger as well when you're doing that. Not a really big thing. Maybe you have to decide: is the design more important, or is that upper fret access more important? If I'm, you know, it's a 22 fret guitar. If I'm really doing lots of up, you know, up there trying to sh shred about it, I'm going to be using that Schecter there or my Sahana here, the 24 fret ones. Anyways, right? This for me, like I said, it's going to be more for like kind of a country type of vibe or like my Led Zeppelin one kind of hard rock type of vibe, which I don't think I have to worry too much about. Well, besides the Star in Heaven solo to be doing up there. Okay. Haven't played this guitar live yet, but it will get a chance next, maybe in two weeks. I may take it up and see how it goes. One other thing that it's not, it's kind of a kind of aesthetic choice. I'm not the biggest fan of their logo on the headstock. Now their logo, as you see, they decide here, let me pick it up to the camera here. You got like a Mabry guitars with the big, start is, you know, big and it gets a little smaller and smaller. And you see the Mabry is pretty easy to read. The guitars and the R, A, R, it's a little bit harder to read. Okay, so uh, there's that. And on this decal, it looks great. On the actual um, guitar, it's kind of burnt in there like a brand. And as it doesn't really pop out much, you know, and especially the guitar part, you know, you can barely kind of read it. The back plate looks a little bit better, the logo on it, but still the guitar part just doesn't really pop out on it. If it was me, I'd take out the guitars, just put Mayberry on it. Maybe, you know, make a, a more of a decal instead of a, a brand. Again, this is all, but then maybe if you didn't make, if it wasn't a brand, maybe that earthy, uh, it might ruin the earthy aesthetic to the whole guitar as a whole. You know, it's a small thing. You know, I personally would, you know, would not brand in a logo. I like something like stencil on, like my Sahana. Also, my my Sahana also has a bit of an earthy, but the logo is like right there in kind of a decal type of thing, which I like a little bit better than that. You know. But still, this, these are both great guitars. So I haven't gigged this guitar yet. I'm still getting used to it a little bit. I've the three, uh, the three saddle type system. I'm not quite used to yet. The action is a little bit higher than I'm used to. But I'm, but I've been playing this guitar a lot nonstop. I think I'm gonna gig it in about two weeks' time. I've got something coming up in two weeks. We'll see how it does then. Oh well, by the way, the weight is fine. You know, it's about I think it was seven pounds something, like three point four kilos. It's you know it's. It's lighter, lighter than this one. It's lighter than that one. So, hey, it's as you worry about being heavy and chunky, it's not. And okay, uh, future Shane here. Uh, one of the reasons the Mabry had a good uh, the Tele sound is because it's actually the pickups are from uh, reclaimed from a 1980s uh, Japanese Fender. So and uh, so it's got actual Fender pickups in it there. Now, why did they decide to do that instead of, say, putting, I don't know, Seymour Duncan's in it or something like that? Well, um, Jason at Mayberry, he kind of, he's into, you know, a little bit environmentally. He likes putting something reclaimed into a lot of his bills. Uh, so if, if you like to, to help with the environment to get something a little bit reclaimed, he, he's, he's all down for that. So in this particular guitar, the pickups are reclaimed and kind of recycled into this guitar. Now, of course, these are boutique guitars, so if that's something you don't want and you want, say, tell them, tell them you want like new Duncans or new DiMaggio's in it, then you probably put it in for you, right? But I'm great. I love the way these sound, and I was, uh, I have a, actually a pair of uh, Telecaster pickups. I thought about putting them in, but then I think these sound great. I'm going to leave them as it is. Also, as for the body, besides the fish hook, this is very a uh, traditional type of Tele body, right? You got there's no belly cuts or arm contours. But sometimes you kind of want it. I kind of wanted something traditional. I didn't really need the. I was looking at a Bacchus telly that had the body cut and and, and the arm contour, but then the, the frets weren't so good. So, and this one looks a heck of a lot nicer too, eh? So once again, if you want some, now this is, now this guitar was not as I ordered it. It was something they made themselves. But mostly, maybe you can get order whatever color you want. You want orange or red or purple or pink, you know, you want something like natural color, they can all do that, right? It's a, a boutique store and they they make, of course they make, you know, tele strats, but they make V's as well. They, whatever you want to order, you can. Of course, these things aren't cheap, 
you know, this boutique guitar is not cheap. I tell you, if you ever had a boutique guitar, you'd never regret it. You know, it's something you feel, you just feel the love that goes into making this guitar. So I'd like to thank uh, Shane from In The Blues for getting this out to me. And also thanks for uh, Jason for making this in the first place. And hopefully I can play it for many years to come and enjoy it. So uh, please write some comments down. Let me tell me what you think of this guitar. And... If any experiences you have Maybury, please go to their homepage and check it out. I'll put a link in the description. So take care again and have a great day. Salut!